But this year, our chief executive of Ghana Cocoa Board, Honorable Joseph Boahin Edu, and his team visited Ecuador. And when they came, what they saw, they decided that our farmers should rather be sponsored to visit Ecuador. about four categories of cocoa farmers we award. We award overall national best cocoa farmer. We award most enterprising female cocoa farmer. We also award most promising young cocoa farmer. And at the regional level, we also award the regional best. After three flights and a long journey via Amsterdam to Ecuador, the farmers and Cocobot officials arrived at the Wyndham Hotel in Guayaquil. Barry Callabout, who organized the trip in partnership with Cocobot, provided a welcoming reception. How are you? Pleasure to meet you and welcome to Ecuador. On the second day, farmers and cocobot officials visited a large commercial farm to see irrigation, farm management and tractor pruning. Here in Ecuador, you know, we are now the third largest uh, producer of cocoa after Ivory Coast and Ghana, obviously. And this, uh, mainly over the last 10 years, Ecuador has grown a lot in volumes due to a variety with the name CCN51. And this CCN51 is a clone which is self-pollinating, uh, high in yield and very resistant to diseases. First of all, welcome. Welcome to Ecuador, welcome to Bin & Co. We are very, very happy to have you here. We would like to exchange knowledge. We believe that uh, exchanging knowledge is how we grow. The delegation took a tour of the plantation to see practical examples of farm management. How do you uh, break it? Do you harvest and break it at that ah, moment? We, we send people here, they come with the, with the machete, they open it right after harvest, right after harvest and we send it in the same day to the process center. The trip to Ecuador is interesting because you can see cocoa farming in different um, areas with different activities, different production, different varieties. When you are, you didn't travel and you are in your home, you see that you are Oga, you are the best. But if you travel, you see that somebody is bigger than you. Me pa cho ye ba iko do no omo e dia ko e fu onu o ma che che di we am si e farm no and e fu onu so di we am si 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 o mo twi twi mo pruni ni adin na o mo di afem o mo start ya fu more than 300 acres and above e nya asen ketwa because e fu onu so but o mo o mo ye fu onu kama how we mo de bia koko no bi wo so when i inspected this farm I'm amazed, I'm surprised, and I've learned truth from it. Farm management is Kukubo's priority, especially the pruning, record keeping, clearing of the land, removal of mistletoe, spraying, and application of fertilizer. They can keep records, so they know what happened last year, they know what happened last month, and then they know what to do this month. I know the people, the person that work on this tree. I have the quantity this year, last year, year before. They know everything about the cocoa and then the management system is very solid.
there have been a vast difference between these two countries, the, how you manage our farms. Because when you cast your eyes front and see how you, have, you are managing your farms, and how everything is going, or even you saw a, a machine that was uh, pruning the, 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 what, the trees. It's a marvelous because I haven't even seen some, this, such a, a machine before unless I visited uh, this Ecuador. The delegation also tried CCN 51, a different variety of coca bean which produces a bigger yield than the traditionally grown Ariba varietal. was a visit to the Malacon, 444 steps to view the highest point in the Guayaquil, and to see the port, where Ecuadorian cocoa beans are exported from. The successful day was celebrated by dancing to Ecuadorian traditional music. On day three, the delegation visited a small Ariba farm to meet a female cocoa farmer and discuss both the challenges and similarities of farming in Ghana and Ecuador. Eh, agradeciéndole primeramente a Dios en especial por darle esa oportunidad de estar aquí en este humilde hogar, de visitarme y para todos ustedes mi nombre es Mercedes Bravo Moreira y me siento orgullosa, en verdad les digo de corazón orgullosa por tener este grupo que ha permitido Dios pues dirigirse a, hasta aquí a mi hogar. Our cocoa farmers, on the average, are about 55 years old. So they are getting older and older. And if not, something is not done to sustain the production of cocoa, maybe our cocoa business will collapse. <laughs> when you ask somebody to become, to go into a cocoa farm, and say it's a punishment. If only you take your time into the farm, you do everything well, you, you, in fact, you spend your time and then you invest in the farm. At the end of the day, you achieve a very great thing from the farm. So to become a cocoa farmer is not a punishment, but rather it's a very best investment in future. Cocoa farming is a good job. So I'm persuading all the young farmers to go to cocoa farm. You see, when we, we go, they have to take up the work. For me, my hometown, I got it about, about 25 to 30 young farmers. Give them money, give them children. I have given them land to do farm, cocoa farm. <laughs> I am chief. Plenty of money. The farmers said goodbye to Mercedes and traveled further inland to Quevedo. In the afternoon, 
the delegation traveled to INEA, the National Institute of Agricultural Research. The farmers witnessed quality checking of cocoa beans. In the lab, they could compare the different taste profiles of cocoa in liquid form. Some were more liked than others. After the much enjoyed tasting, they practiced the grafting of seedlings. We can to start? Yeah? Okay. We have about 40% of our cocoa trees not producing. It means our production level will decline. Therefore, Cocoa Board has taken it upon itself to introduce some policies, interventions, to increase the production and to also encourage farmers to also increase their income. I know when you prune, it will control a disease, a black pot disease, but the money to prune was a problem. So when Cocoa Board came in, it helped me, it helped me with the cost of a chemical application. Come on, good job. So after that, they, they did the pollination and then I realized that particular place, uh, the production was increased and it was amazing. The delegation traveled to the western town of Babahoyo, the capital of the Los Rios province, for an overnight stay. On the fourth day, the delegation traveled to the north of Ecuador to spend the day at a large farm, owned and managed by the fourth generation of a family. Welcome everybody to Hacienda San Jose. Thank you. Uh, we have prepared for you a special day. We will. Uh, go to the fields, we will harvest the cacao pots uh, we produce. We will also check on uh, pruning. After a short tour in the plantation's formal garden, the delegation once again traveled through the cocoa farm. Trees as far as the eye can see. Their farms are, are well pruned, they are well cleared, there are no diseases, and especially the harvesting is done periodically. So you can see the, these guys uh, pruning. The idea is to go around the tree and to keep uh, the distance between each uh, tree. So I, I will invite you to have one of these scissors and you can, you can also practice pruning. going to change the style of pruning and adopt the new technology I've observed. Standing on the floor, you can just do the pruning and then you can harvest even on the floor. But mine is a little tall, so you have to just do a little more work before you prune, before you harvest. I'm going to prune three times a year. After the pruning, it was time to test who was the fastest kabos breaker. One, two, three, go! It's been 
interesting, it's been educative, and then it's been interactive too. As a reminder of their visit, each farmer could plant his or her own cocoa tree. After our visit, I think we are going to share the ideas that we came and then acquired to the entire farmers in my area. I will teach people also. I will not going to keep it on my own. I'm going to train people to learn. Great, big applause for Debbie. Yeah. They tell you everything. They, they, don't, they don't close any information. They just let you in. The day ended with the much-anticipated soccer game between Ghana and Ecuador. On the last and final day of the trip, an experience away from the cocoa farms was organized. The delegation had a surprise trip to experience the rare sight of whale watching. I'm a cocoon, This trip is very, very nice to me. I have learned a lot about it. And I will take this opportunity to thank Coco Board, Governor of Ghana, for allowing us to travel to see this on my own eyes. In 10 years, I wish I had my own plantation. I just want to do more of the planting of cocoa. Yes, so in 10 years, I, I must increase the size that I'm having now, yeah, in a more sustainable way. <laughs>